Today I'm showing you how you can make your own PvP texture pack for any Minecraft version. So for example, this can be 1.8.9, but also 1.20.2. Um, anyways, let's get right into it. So the first thing you want to do is press the Windows and R key at the same time. Type in a percentage sign, app data, spelled just like that, and then another percentage sign like so. Hit enter or click on OK to continue. And then this right here is going to open up. You want to head into the .minecraft folder. Then from there you want to scroll down a little bit and then head into the versions folder right over here. Now this is the point where you're going to need to decide hmm, what version am I going to make my texture pack for. Right, this can be literally any version that you want. Um, for example, 1.8.9 which is what we have over here or as I said 1.20.2 really anything you want um, I'm just going to be making mine for 1.8.9 but it's going to work the same either way for all versions so you need to make sure that you have actually fully launched and played the version that you want to make your pack for through the Minecraft launcher that is very important anyways if you have then you should see this .jar file over here when you open up this folder um, either way, there should be two different files, both called the game version. If you can see this .jar or .json at the end, that's kind of a problem because you need that throughout this entire tutorial. So to fix that, you want to go over to View, Show, and make sure that file name extensions is ticked. Now depending on your operating system, you know, it might not work exactly like so. However, either way, you want to make sure that you can see file name extensions. Anyways. Then what you just want to do is copy the jar file. Now then just find a location where we're going to make our PvP texture pack and paste in this .jar file. Now here already is going to be the first part why you need to be able to see the .jar. We're going to want to rename this, then remove the .jar from the end as you can see, and replace it with .zip, that is .zip. Make sure you keep the dot at the end. This pop-up here is going to come up, but we can just click on yes because we know that our file is still going to work. Now it's a zip folder and what you want to do is right click on that and then select the extract all option. Now once again depending on your operating system this might not actually be an option and if that is the case they only need to download a program called either 7-zip or WinRAR. I'll link one of the two down in the description probably and those will allow you to perform this action. There's no way around it and we will actually need to perform this action again later in the tutorial so keep that in mind. Anyways, then you can just click on extract once again, and now, especially depending on your game version, this might take up to 10 minutes. So, you know, do a few push-ups. Anyways, since I chose the game version 1.8.9, which is relatively early, it's not going to take long at all for me. It took around a minute max. Anyways, you can now delete this, this zip folder if you wish, and we should be left with this regular file folder right over here. And here you'll see that there are a bunch of things. Now, I have 2,479. However, if your game version is 1.20.2, then you might have even ha have more than 10,000 things here. So, you want to select everything by pressing Ctrl and A at the same time. Then you want to hold down the control button and click on the assets folder. Now depending on your game version there might be more or less folders in this area. Either way only hold down control and click on the assets folder. That's actually going to deselect it. Then right click and delete everything else because the assets folder is the only one we actually want to keep. As you can see that's all gone beautiful. So head into the assets folder the Minecraft folder and now we can delete some more stuff. Is it mandatory? No, but it is actually going to make your PvP texture pack faster as well as use up less storage. Uh, so, you know, it's worth the five clicks. So delete everything apart from the textures folder right over here and now this is where it gets fun. So, in this textures folder there are all Minecraft textures, so we can take a look at items, for example, um, let's type it in sword. There we go, sword, let's type that correctly, and as you can see, all swords are going to now pop up, because we're using the search thing, of course, and basically this is where you can do whatever you want to do. So I'm just going to open this up with Paint 3D, for example. 
Um, and now you can just start editing this, turning it into your own PVP texture pack. Now, how do you want to edit this? I do not care. Please be as creative as you possibly can. As you can see, I've opted for a rather simple approach. I've literally turned the diamond sword red. It is now a fire sword. Epic. So I can click on, for example, Ctrl S to save this. And good, moving on to the next thing. So now a very important thing when you're editing textures, and this could be sword textures, this goes for literally all textures. Um, I made a fire sword now in theory, right? Do not rename them. If you rename these textures, it's not going to work. Just leave them as is. Yeah, I'll do another example with the gold sword, right? And now obviously there are infinite amounts of things you can do. Obviously don't only edit swords, you know, edit axes, edit shields, edit this is and that. Um, anyways, basically something we can do here is totally different type of an example. There we go. This is a definitely much more realistic PvP texture pack. I've made the sword, sword shorter. Beautiful. That is very nice. Anyways, um, I hope that just gives a little bit of an example of stuff you can do. If you're using Paint 3D, which is definitely something I recommend for beginners because it's really easy to use, make sure you always have transparent canvas turned on. That is pretty important. Um, anyways, let's move on from the swords. So basically in this items area, you'll be able to find every item. For example, we have bows here as well. We can go ahead and edit those. Edit all the items you want to edit. Uh, go ahead with that. And now there's a few specific things I want to shed some light to. First off is armor. So if you head into the, where is it, items folder over here, you'll be able to find um, all armor. I'll just, uh, I've just selected all the helmets here, so this is the diamond helmet, and you can edit this texture, that's going to be beautiful, and that is actually going to edit the item, so the one you'd hold in your hand, but that's not going to change how they look on people, right, and to do that, to edit the way armor looks when you're wearing it, or when other people are wearing it, you want to go into this models folder over here, armor and then in here you'll see the model for armor so i can just quickly open up the diamond armor model over here and as you can see this is going to show up when people wear it i'll put a red dot on here um and one here too just to um show you guys kind of how this works anyways that is basically how to change armor Continuing on to another small thing, so let's change the apple texture because that's a really common texture to change in, um, in you know, PvP texture packs, right? So now something cool I can actually do here is make it smaller. So here we go, and now this is another way that you can actually edit your textures. If you see, if you take a look at the canvas area, you'll see that it is eight pixels by eight pixels, which is interesting because if we open up literally any other texture, it is going to be 16 pixels by 16 pixels, right? So that's another different way in which you can edit your textures. You can make them uh, smaller, and I'll do that in a really stupid way right now by literally going like this. Right, but that just gives you an idea of all the different options you can do, right? So you can make it 8x8, eight eight, but obviously you can also make it a lot larger and a lot more detailed if you wish to do so. Anyways, those are basically kind of the options you have. I recommend you just look around in here, find out everything, and of course if you have questions, leave those down in the comments below. Alright, so let's say I've edited everything I want to edit and I'm done with the textures. Now something that I highly recommend you to do is to delete any textures that you didn't edit. So I didn't edit any blocks, didn't edit that, didn't edit that, didn't edit that, etc, etc, etc. You can go ahead and continue and do that. And now I didn't edit any of these. So why not just delete them, right? Because we literally don't need them. What that's just going to do is make this a lot easier for Minecraft to handle, right? So, you know, once again, it's not going to kill your game or your pack. However, I do recommend it. Anyways, now you can just go back to the area where you can see the assets folder. Now that you've finished your textures, we can start on doing the things that we need to do to be able to import our pack. Now, the, now 
you know, you want to head over to the area, as I said, where you can see the assets folder. That is very important. Then right click over there, go to new and create a new text document. And you want to call this pack. That is P A C K, no capital letters. Very, very important, right? Then you want to open this up and paste in this right here. Paste it in, but from where? the description that's right you should just be able to copy this right from the description really really easy paste this in. take a good look at this though you want to make sure that you're not missing any of the curly brackets copying and pasting can sometimes be a little difficult right and let's say you accidentally only copied this well guess what your packs not gonna work right anyways there's a few things here that we can actually customize First off is the pack format, and now we need to customize this. To be able to customize it, you need to head over to this Minecraft wiki page, which is, you guessed it, linked right down in the description. And look what it says, pack format, where have I seen that before? Anyways, you want to scroll down a tiny, tiny bit under this resources tab over here, and this is where you're going to want to look closely. Now, under this releases tab, Find the version that you are making your pack for. If you're making yours for 1.19.3, then look over here. There's a number. In this case, our number is 12. That's the one you're going to want to remember. Well, it is if you're using 1.19.3, of course. If you're using 1.20.2, it's 18. If you're using um, 1.13 or 1.14, it's going to be 4. Anyways, I'm using 1.8.9, which means my number is 1. Okay, I need to remember that. Great, I've remembered the number 1. Now, in this pack format area here, what we need to do is replace whatever number we have with the number we needed to remember, in my case 1, but in your case it might be 23, it might be 456, or 55, or it might be 9. Who knows? Either way, make sure you have your number for your corresponding version, that is very important. Anyways, then on to the description area. Here, description, cool. You'll see two quotation marks right there. In between there, um, you can type in your pack description. So 864 is pack description because I'm not that um, creative. Um, probably put please subscribe here to urge you guys to subscribe. You know, I'd greatly appreciate it. Um, you can type in here any description you want. Of course, you don't have to. Um, then control S to save that and you can exit out. Now, I just realized I did kind of forget to mention that I'm using Notepad++, which is really useful for this, but you can open this up with any text editor you want. Notepad++, by the way, is free on the Microsoft Store as well as just Google. Um, anyways, also, why do you actually need this? Well, Minecraft is going to read this pack file and it's going to think to itself, whoa, this is a pack cool right and then you'll actually be able to import it which is pretty useful in other words we're not actually done yet because we need to go ahead and rename this and just like we did earlier with the dot jar file we're now going to do with the with this dot txt file remove the txt from the end and replace it with mc meta there we go spelled dot m c m e t a We'll get this pop-up we saw before and we can click on yes. Now you will know you've done it correctly if under type over here it says MC Meta file. If that's the case, you've done it perfectly. Now there is one more optional step and then we're finished. This optional step is to add a pack icon. I'm going to add my beautiful channel logo which I'm not actually that fond of anymore as my pack icon as you can see over here. And now there is a few things that we need to change to this. First off, I'm just going to open it up with Paint 3D, and I'm going to make sure that it is in fact square. Great, it is. If your pack icon is not square, then, you know, it's either going to get stretched or cropped inside of Minecraft, which is something you probably don't want, so I recommend it just to make sure it is square. Next off, you want to call it the exact same as this other file we have in here, pack spelled p-a-c-k once again please guys making sure there are no capital letters if it has a capital letter it is not going to work if it has spelling errors it's not going to work 
We did that. Now we need to do the same thing as we've done two times previous. You see this file name extension here? It says JPG. That is one of many, many image types. No matter what it says over here, you want to go ahead and change the .jpg to PNG. Perfect. That's exactly what we want. Now, if your file was already a PNG, then lucky you, you don't need to type three letters. Anyways, as you see, it still works perfectly fine. It is now called pack.png and it is a PNG file. That is amazing. That is exactly what we wanted. Once you've done everything, you are now ready to go. Now, do keep in mind, you can always come back and edit this texture pack later. So don't be scared. What you want to do is select everything. You can do that by pressing Ctrl A or just going like this. Right click and then compress the zip file. Remember, if you'll travel in time with your mind back to the beginning, you'll remember that we extracted a zip file and now we are compressing our own pack into a zip file. You can call this anything you want. So I'll call this It's Me 64's PVP Texture Pack. There we are. That's probably a pretty fitting name. Um, and oh, I'll put 189 at the end so that I remember what version I made it for. Anyways, this is now literally your pack. There we go, I just dragged it onto my desktop. Make sure you keep this in a place where you remember where it is, it's very important. Oh, and all this stuff, in theory you can just delete it because you don't really need it anymore. Um, but you know, it's literally two and a half megabytes probably, so I'm not sure why you would delete it, but okay. Now in the Minecraft launcher, select the version that you've made your pack for. That might sound a little redundant, but I've had people before saying, oh my god, my pack isn't working, when they were just not loading up the version of Minecraft they made their pack for. Anyways, I made mine for 1.8.9, I don't care what you made your version, but I don't care what version you made your pack for, just launch Minecraft. And here we have it, Minecraft. We can go into Options, Resource Packs, and then click on this Open Resource Pack Folder button, then drag in our pack, just like so. Now under Available Resource Packs, we should be able to scroll down a little, and look at that, we found it! It's 64 is PvP Texture Pack 1. Oh my god, the name is too long. You know, that's too bad. Luckily, I have loaded up one at at 9. Here you can see the pack description that we typed out. Once again, now do do keep in mind that you sh also shouldn't make the pack description too long, otherwise it's just not going to show up. Now you will notice that a lot of these packs here, or basically all of them, have my channel logo, and that's because I actually make a bunch of texture packs. I will link my page in the description. I'd greatly appreciate it if you could check that out. Thank you very much. Anyways, um, I'm just going to show you guys that what I did is not actually fake and that it works. So I've now enabled the pack, as you can see, and... I'll just show you guys. Here we are in 1.8.9 and I still haven't changed my skin, that's kind of stupid, um, but that's a me problem. Anyways, we can open up our inventory and then we can just check out some stuff here. So what did I change? Oh yeah, I changed the apple. Um, here, as you can see, we got the apple. Remember the apple, I made it smaller. Oh, I haven't set up my keybinds. Um, as you can see, the apple, we made it smaller. You can clearly see the difference in there, so that's definitely pretty cool. Here, we already have a preview of our beautiful sword we made. Um, how do you... There. So, here we have this golden sword that we made. The proportions are, as you can see, kind of off. Didn't really put that much effort into it. And here's our diamond sword we retextured to red. Now... Still don't have my keybind set up. Um, please be more creative than me, but you know, this is just kind of a demonstration of how it works. Oh, yeah, also, as you can see, all this diamond armor it has no red dots. But if I put it on, um, here, there, as you can see, it has a red dot, but the texture itself does not. So I hope that also shows the difference between the model and the texture. That's an issue people sometimes experience, which I kind of do understand because it is complicated, you know. Anyways, um, that was basically that. If you learned something today, then I'd greatly appreciate it if you subscribed as a form of showing appreciation to me. For right now, though, thank you ever so much for watching. And, whoa, 
I hope to see you again in the next one. Bye-bye.